Hi everyone. Let's talk about how to format our paper, how to upload it to Canvas, and finally how to access all of the applications from Microsoft through your district email. So first of all, uh, we use MLA formatting in English class. The other departments may use APA formatting, but traditionally in English classes you will use MLA. MLA asks you to do several things. First of all, it wants you to put your name in the upper right hand corner of every page. So let's look at how to do that using Microsoft Word. It'll be similar in other programs. So the first thing I did is I just double clicked up in, in the header area and it opens the header for me. When it does that, it gives me a toolbar and here is my page number and it's going to ask me where do I want it. MLA wants it on the right hand side of every page so I click and it puts it on the right hand side. Then they also want the student's name or the writer's name next to it so I type it, put a space in and now if I click away from that it's going to put that on every every single page. You can see it's grayed out so I can't get to it. It's not on the page itself, it's in the header. Um, if you can't find it by double clicking you click insert and there's your header and it'll take it to take you there as well you want to put your name first and last name on every page then your teacher's name if your teacher is a woman and you're not sure if she goes by Ms. or Mrs. make sure you clarify most of your teachers will let you know what they what they prefer if you're not sure you always go with Ms. Then you want to put the title of your of your class and write it out fully. Your class is called Accelerated Language and Literature 2, so it's a long name, but you'll get you can, you'll get uh, you'll get better with it. Then you put the date. Now you're going to notice that the date is formatted a little differently than we traditionally write dates. So you start with the day, then the month, and then the year. And the reason for that is because in other countries they format their dates differently. So if I were to write out September 10th, 2020 uh, in America, I would write 11-10-2020. But in England, you would write 10-11-2020. So this clarifies that in academic writing. The next thing we need to do is we need to double space our paper. So if I, I'm going to highlight my text, I'm going to come back to my home tab and I'm going to click on the arrow that says line spacing and of course if I hover over it it tells me what this does and I'm going to go down to double space. Now I've got an extra space here so I want to highlight there and say remove space after paragraph. Okay so when we read this I put a couple little notes in here. Of course I indented my paragraph because it is a paragraph the way you do that is you hit the tab key. Okay, I've had kids who space over five spaces, but just hit the tab key and it'll automatically tab it five spaces. Indentions help the reader know that one idea has ended and another has begun. So we want to think about paragraphs as units of argument. Sometimes kids ask me how many sentences it needs to be and my answer is always, well, how many do you think you need? Because when you're writing an academic paragraph that has a topic sentence, analysis, evidence, it's going to be longer than perhaps a different style of paragraph. But one paragraph should build on the, on the next to prove that thesis. They all need to interconnect. Your paper should be 12 point font and MLA asks you to use New Times Roman but you may see up here that I'm using Arial. Arial is easier for uh, visual spatial learners to see um, and, and uh, it doesn't matter that much to us as long as it's not a, a funky font. You need to keep it um, looking, looking um, professional. Okay, so no fancy fonts. All right, so there we have that done. Now we need to look at how to save it. We're going to go file, save, save as. Mine automatically saves, but I'm going to do save a copy just to show you. Um, here's your characterization paragraph and I want to save it to my OneDrive. Okay, if I save it to my OneDrive, I can always get to it. Um, and so in here I have a folder called ninth grade and then I would double click it and I would probably put a folder called Accelerated Language and Literature 2 so that when I take Accelerated Language and Literature 3 next year, I can keep my sophomore papers separate. Okay, so now that that's done, Let's take a look at how to access Microsoft Word from 
um, from your district computer. So I'm in my email. Up here is the waffle. And there are all the apps. So you have access to PowerPoint, to Word, to Excel, to Teams. Everything is located right here. And so if you get lost and you need something, just open your email and you can navigate to it from there. Okay? Let's talk about how to, to upload this assignment now and then how to get to our peer edits. Uh, remember that I am in Accelerated Language and Literature Semester 2. I can get to my assignment from over here. When I click on it, here is the assignment and I'm going to do Submit Assignment. Now, I can click on Office 365. That's where your login is located. That's where your OneDrive is located. And then I would have to log in using my credentials. Uh, sometimes I have trouble with it when I'm working from home. So if you have trouble uploading, uh, download a copy to your desktop and then upload it from there. So this is what I typically do when I'm having any trouble. I go to my File Upload. I click Browse. Here's my desktop folder and I just created a, a folder called Documents to Upload. I can go to it. If I click Date Modified, it's going to put the last thing I was working on on there and that helps. Double click the assignment and then click Submit Assignment. Once I've done that, I get lots of little confetti and that's kind of fun. Then here is where once I've assigned, once I have uploaded my own paper, I will be assigned someone to peer review. And I would click that and then I would follow the directions for editing. As always, ask if you have any questions.